Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaias from The Automator. And this is a cool video. Isaias had a really, really great idea for, we were doing some web scraping and funny enough, we were hitting a, a certain page where we actually had to do like image searching and looking for stuff, but we couldn't connect to the DOM. And we're like, how are we going to tell when the page is loaded? So yeah. we were adding some checks, but what you, I don't want to spoil it. Isaias, you tell them what you thought of. It's brilliant. Right. So <laughs> one of the things is that um, this is, if you're not connected straight into the browser, like we did before with IE, right? Or if you're not using Rufadium or anything like that, how can you tell if a page was load up? And one of the things that I noticed is that when you, when a page is loading, the fav icon, the favorite icon at the top of the tab becomes a little something that is actually kind of like spinning, a spinning ball, right? But once it finishes loading, then the fa the fav icon then gets set. And then I was thinking, hey, and and this happens uh, that if you go to a page um, oh, that takes a little bit longer to load, let's say the automator.com, if it has a lot of things, it takes a while for that five icon to finish loading until the actual five icon shows. So, and, and the cool thing is that that five icon only shows once the whole thing has been fully loaded, which was what I was waiting for. Because sometimes if I was looking for the window title, well, the window title is the first thing that gets set. So if you check for that, it doesn't mean that the page has been loaded yet. So this seemed to be a very good idea. Well, and then uh, we, yeah. Let me interrupt you there for a second, because um, I did check with Firefox and with Edge, and they both have seem to have a very similar approach. Uh -huh. However, okay. we, we didn't, programmatically checked to verify exactly like it's always loaded right like right no no we we, we, no i haven't i haven't really tested it like programmatically tested but from experience i've noticed yeah. when that spinning thing is gone i know that the page is fully interact interactive so i can click around i can do stuff so and and this whole looks conversation good. looks good yeah. yeah, so this whole conversation only applies if you're not connecting straight into the browser, if you're not doing any automation with Rufadium or something that already have things to know if the page was loaded correctly. It's just if you're not doing that. So what we decided was, okay, is there a way that we can use the tools that we have available to check for that? Um, what we came up with was joining two things. We, we actually uh, used UIA. Now let me let me go ahead and do this. Let me open up UIA, for example, and run it. Now this uh, with UIA, we can capture each of the tabs individually, and that was very important because what we were going to do is trying to image search for something. Now. I don't want to search the whole screen. I want to search just the last tab. Now, depending on your requirements, you might not want only the last tab. You might want other things. Um, in my case, my script is opening a new tab and I just want to know when that tab is open. And whenever you open a new tab, it happens to be the last one. So I wanted to capture the last tab, at least the location. And you can see this blue box here that tells me the exact location of the whole tab. So I'm passing back that as the area where I'm going to search for the image. And usually the image is just at the beginning, so it's not going to take long to find right it. Click, right click on that and duplicate it. Um, like duplicating the, the tab? Yeah. And right. this, this is the whole thing, right? If we did image search and we didn't lock it down, it right. would and on the left, regardless of the status of the one on the right. Right. So that was the other thing. So if you have the same icon twice, if you're searching the whole screen or, for example, the whole panel there, you might have issues. And I wanted to kind of like lock it down to just the last tab because that's the one that interests me. And then we were going to use um, the find text function because it's really... Pretty cool. It gives me very short code to search, and it has the option to just wait for that thing to pop up on the screen. So I have a wait functionality, and it just keeps searching that area until it pops up, right? So with that, what we came up with was, was this little tool that 
uses the UIA library from the Scolada, the version two at this point, and uses the find text class, which is uh, created. I, I don't remember the name of the guy, but he created a, this class a long time ago, and Fayou? he ported it now for V2. Was it Feiyu, I think? Yeah, yeah. It, it was, I guess he was Chinese. I'm not really sure. It was a Chinese guy. And now once once we have it, right, um, we have those two libraries. You can either include it or just paste the code down there. That's what I did. Now, what I did is just a few things. Grab the Chrome, grab the tabs, and then from the tabs, grab the last one. This here is the one that selects the, la the last tab. You can change this code to only grab the first tab or the second tab, however you want it. I use the, the length here because that's the size of the array, and that is going to always give me the last tab. And I get the bounding rectangle and just use the fine text. And this is the key point. I use the wait command and how long I want to wait for it. You can make it a negative number to wait indefinitely. In this case, in this instance, I'm just waiting 10, ten seconds. And in my script, I would up wait to. for the 10 seconds. Yeah, up to 10 seconds, of course. Um, now, the only thing that I want to mention here that is a little bit tricky is this thing here. What you're getting is not X and Y positions. It's not X and Y. It's the left side, the top side, and the other location. So the right side here, I cannot use it as is because what it's giving me is kind of like the um, um, width of the thing. So I did some basic math to get the final location, and that's it. And importantly, I put here the 0 0.1 to allows for some errors. I am giving here a 10% error tolerance. So even if the, the image is not found exactly matching the one that I have, it would just allow for 10% tolerance. That was it. So now the script right now, when I hit F2, it is going to send a refresh to the browser first. And while it's spinning, then it's going to try to find the thing. And once it finds it, then it's going to show a message box. That's what I'm doing here. So right now, if I hit F2, you will notice that it is spinning and then it finds it and it gives me the message box immediately. So as soon as that stops loading, then it gives me that. But here's the interesting part and it's marking it. But I could have more tabs. As long as that is the last tab, it doesn't matter where it is. The same script is going to go ahead and find it at that other position. So it's always finding the last tab. It doesn't matter where it's located. And that's the key point here. And this is really helpful because the we were running this on our own computers and then we said, okay, let's give it to the client now. Well, the computer he had was just running a bit slower or maybe it was the bandwidth or whatever, but yes. the timings we had put in sleeps to wait, you know, let's say three or four seconds, but they weren't the same. And we're like, we, there's gotta be a better yeah, way. There's, there's gotta be we a better way. Yeah. Don't want to wait four or 10 seconds. We want right, to say, exactly. hey, wait up to this. But if you find something, you know, if it finishes loading, do your then check. just go ahead and do whatever you're supposed to do. So it's, it's basically, again, it's not a foolproof method, but if you're not really connecting to the DOM, it's going to be really tricky for you to know when a page has finished loading yeah. because you might see images here on the screen and the page is still loading. And that is something that it, it, right now, if I hit it, I have some images, but the thing is still loading. And that means that I cannot... Probably what I want to interact with is not loaded yet. And that's what I wanted to get around with. And this was a very interesting concept. Um, we're going to be testing it out, but I, I'm pretty confident that it's going to work at least as we are expecting at the moment. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to emphasize enough of like why you want to build this kind of a check into there, not just because of, you're avoiding errors, but it is night and day. We, we actually worked on the script. I, I we've had it what, for like a year. The, the one we were working on today is this on yes. the, the merging of files. And I'm like, you know what? We've been running this a lot. I don't need to check these three or four things. Let's yeah. remove that manual check. And when we removed the manual thing and, and not hard coded, but programmatically just did A to Z entirely instead of manually checking on the way. I That's literally scripting. laughed out loud when he ran it because it, it blinked and it was done. And I didn't realize I was way, I was adding so much time to it because I would, 
let it run, look at it. Oh, I was manually changing the name of the file. I didn't have to do that. And no. so it's the same and thing in this one. In this case, it's the same. Like instead of yeah. we stopping for five seconds or 10 seconds as we were doing, if we have a more uh, intelligent approach to that, you might save a lot of time, a ton of time. So sometimes the page loads in one second and my script can continue. Sometimes it might take more than five seconds. And that was what right. triggered the error last time. It just took a little bit longer than five seconds, but my script just said, hey, I didn't find it in five seconds. Something is wrong, which is not true. And which is also why you put 10 seconds there, but you didn't make it unlimited. Yeah, right? exactly. We have a time there, but at some point we'd say, you know what? There's probably something else going on here. That's the fun thing. Like I can put a very high time frame, like 30 seconds, Right. It's not going to be that the script is going to wait 30 seconds, right. but 30 seconds is enough to give any web page time to actually load. So, yeah. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video if it helps you out. Uh, we release videos twice a week here. We're the largest auto hotkey channel and some say the best. And uh, <laughs> consider we, we talk about this kind of stuff in the hero group. If you're not a member of the hero group, you should really check it out. It, it is There is a fee involved, but you get three hours a week of where we're helping you solve problems plus access to our Telegram group during the week. So you can ask questions there during the week. And then um, you get 25% off of our courses and our client work and everything else. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.